Um, this next guy is coming on the stage. If you haven't already heard of him, he's one of the best poets in Scotland. He's one of my closest friends. A big warm welcome, please, to Adam V. Cheshire. <laughs> I have to wonder if I'm one of Scotland's best poets because I'm one of his close friends. <laughs> and, uh... How's everybody doing? Clue for Bar! Yeah, yeah noise! Make some fucking noise! Yeah. Up in the extra second here at the Clue for Bar for the first time. It's the first time we've had a licensed bar at our disposal. It's very exciting. We usually we used to have to smuggle in, carry out, and you know, it all got a little dodgy and Benny Romans got upset, you know. Um, but yeah, this is cool. Alcohol and rental at all. Yes, democratic and shit. So, ideology then, eh? Ideology. Ah, oh, fuck. Um, so, <laughs> I thought I would just bash something out about ideology uh, today, uh, like five minutes or something. But then I thought, I'll do a little research. So I went on Wikipedia. And before you know it, hey, wait, wait. Before you know it, I'm falling down a wiki hole and I'm reading academic essays about the sociological concept of the imaginary. So yeah, it wasn't quite as simple as I thought it would be. But still, it, I think it turned out okay. I am in awe of ideas. The way they blossom and take root. The way they entangle and ensnare. The things they can show you. Such wondrous things. The whole of creation and beyond. Such terrible things, born of thought, such misery, such monstrosity, such marvel, such masturbation, such madness. I could drink myself to death on ideas and never have to drink the same idea twice. Such umpteen, such multitudes, what fantasy, what fun! Away. <laughs> Sometimes they stick, like in the craw, and snowball rolling and absorbing and taking on mass, starting to become tangible, take shape, like concrete. Ideas, fucking ideas, fucking ideas, fucking ideas, fucking ideas. <laughs> Dropping bastard thoughts like fucking bass lines. <laughs> A creature born of modernity in the 20th century. Fendicicle as contagion, as if from the ground they burst into the minds of the denizens of Western civilization. A change in thinking, leading in the direction of the rational, mechanical animal. Certain institutions came into being. Not all at once, not a brush, but over time. It's only looking back to be so compact periods and moments. The market economy, that beast which broke free of its chains and took possession of our collective souls, has its origin right there. In fact, an argument can be made that the concept of ideology cannot be separated from that of the economic Sorry, <laughs> In fact, an argument can be made that the concept of ideology cannot be separated from that of econo economi economies. Oh, economies! <laughs> Sorry. I did write this, honestly. <laughs> An early instance of the word in print belonging to none other than Marxy Boy himself, which perhaps could give indication of how tangled the two have become to be. The public sphere was birthed here, fueled by a reaction against the increased infringement of the industrial upon society. As some ideas began to congeal, I was rushed off ahead, dizzy and insane, born before they had time to grow. Like the growing suspicion that people could in fact govern themselves. So fuck ideology! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> fuck ideology instead, consider the imaginary! <laughs> Whereas ideology is determined to fix and 
place and stagnate. The imaginary emerges from the ways we interact with the other, one another, the things we think and all that falls out of our mouths and fingers. Consider the family, not a material thing, but one born of the imagined, with no more mass than a photon, but no less real. The bonds between the members of the family, mother, father, etc., an entire hierarchy of power relations and psychic manifestations. That is what I mean by the imaginary. Not a fiction, but a bundle of meanings, kind of like the Lacanian conceptualization, but frankly, psychotherapy is somewhat passe, so let's not limit ourselves with that pervert Freud, shall we? It is from the imaginary, not ideology, that our most fruitful endeavours are wrought. Art and poetry and music and theory, the ability to recreate family, not as a unit consisting of those who share genetic code, but of those with a shared sense of identity, bound through familiarity, experience, and mentality. The concept of generations from boomer to millennial observed sociologically is manifested through the imaginary, maybe with relations ideology but in no way limited by it. So, although it might be an interesting intellectual game and a way to prescribe formal structures in society, you can keep your fucking ideology. Capitalist, socialist, materialist, consumer shit. I'll be too busy blazing the imaginary for it to even bother me. Thank you. <laughs> I buy a new Kindle because uh, I'm a drunken asshole who blacks out all the time. I lost it. Uh, uh, I got this from uh, like Poundland, no, Pound, the place where they sell you stuff that people sold to them. Cash covers? Cash covers, that's the motherfucker there. Um, for 20 quid. Uh, the one I had before was touchscreen, but this one, this one's not. This is annoying. I'm still getting used to it. Um, I actually wrote this for a different extra second. Um, I'm going to perform it now because it has to do with the concept of ideology. Uh, the extra second in question is on capitalism. Uh, so this poem is about capitalism. Capitalism is eating itself alive! Having developed a taste for human flesh early on and having consumed the rainforest for dessert and filled the seas with garbage, it apparently decided what it really needed in its diet was an artisan blend of numbers, algorithm and mathematics. Not that capitalism is going to stop snacking on the biomass. Capitalism just believes in a balanced diet. Capitalism remembers when it used to serve humankind. Well, many mankind. He kind of bobbed up womankind with nice things that caught the light pretty and really tied the room together. Capitalism fueled innovations and filled dollar signs and filled eyes with dollar signs and built the skyline and broke the surf and when mankind saw that it was good. Well, most of them. Others weren't so convinced. Anyway. Because they saw that it was good, mankind continued to feed capitalism whatever its little heart desired. And capitalism got bigger and bigger and bigger until it had consumed the entire planet. Capitalism needed meat, it needed flesh. Realised that without it, it could not live, but knew that in order to claim the flesh, it must first dismember and reforge, separate and infect. Could see which came before it, could see the whole wide open spaces, the expanses of green and fertile land, and the people who belong to it, each mixing their blood with the soil, woman and man and child alike, in worship of the very earth which gave them life, mother and mistress to all. Whilst up on the hill and cut ensconced in towers of stone, men played games of imagined divinity over their heads like cartoon pianos hanging from strings. Capitalism knew of God and goddess, knew the sway they played between legionnaires and caused the flesh to dance, gave reason to the book of days and joined in beatific union, limbs entwined in damp with morning dew on trembling grass. 
gave hallelujah to the dance of bodies and souls of meat and forest of air and soil of birth and death and return. God led a new which must be shook loose before it could take root. And so it took to the wind as seed in search of that which would sever humanity from itself. Thank you. Two more, ten more, nine more, four more, right. Okay, cool. All right, well, one on the concept of the fact that the personal is political, or do you want one on the fact that my mum is a Christian? Uh, Christians! Uh, the other one. The other one, then, I guess. I do love my shouty poems. It's not just a feminist statement. I've been back in its birth, rooting in the experiences of women in their pre 1960s lives as they break their own backs, avoiding existence as a vacancy under the weight of societal expectations and the male gaze, reflected and contorted by the expectations of their own. But ideas don't stay away, we put them care, not fellowship of living things that make us their hosts and spread like diseases, mutating and meeting up to compare notes. The phrases come to me so much more than its original context implies. Come to me so much to so many unfettered by concepts as gender and race and striking at the very core of what it means to be a human being. The personal is political. It's not some far away being hidden amongst layers of laws tangled up in a mess of secret handshakes performed by some elite away in a hallowed hall, passing down benedictions to the passive masses. It's right there in the everyday in the way we interact with one another, the kindnesses and cruelties which pass between us and the thoughts we think that seek to send us down garden paths, tripping over our own feet. Baying for another's blood. The personal is political. Can easily be described as a game we've made to attempt to tip scales and control ourselves. We get it down, we all have a love of bondage. Need the labyrinths we've created in order to keep ourselves occupied. And perhaps some bunch of white guys got real good at playing this game. In putting war of their own and their desires. Got so good at living their lives and convincing others that they should follow in their footsteps. Even as the game's got more complex. Individuals becoming couples, couples becoming families, families becoming communities, communities becoming societies and societies is giving way to the great clusterfuck of civilization. Despite all that, they continue to keep the fact that these gorgeous toys we've made away from the minds of many. I want to make damn sure the rest of us don't realize that we can pull our own strings. It's the personal. It's political. Pulses for our arteries and veins dwells in our meat like carbon dioxide. A weighing release is deep in every cell. Hands my bones and spills out of our mouths whenever we speak. Because the great beast has got fingers plunged deep into every pie. Because the great beast is the human condition, the grand illusion of life. And that despite our best efforts, we're all living in the shadows of somebody else's imagination instead of sharing in the imaginations of each other. Personal is political, so stop sitting on the sidelines and give the ball a kick. Even if you miss, it's got to be more rewarding than doing fuck all about it. Thank you.
And then, guys, got a really, really special treat for you this time. I, I, I met the next performer when I was at this event that we're doing in Govium with Warriors Charity. Um, absolutely amazing. This is um, my first time here at Extra Second. Uh, a big warm welcome, please.